we are going to talk um, to the Conservative Chair, Cairns, who's morning. just come in, just as we were looking at those pictures of, of the Prime Minister. Welcome to you. Good morning to you. Well, I say good morning, but uh, give us an assessment of, of how your party's been doing in these local elections so far. It's been a pretty, pretty brutal night for the Conservatives, hasn't it? Well, we all said it would be a disappointing uh, night, a disappointing day yesterday uh, for the party. Uh, the independent academic forecasts were coming in that we were going to lose a 1,000 seats. Uh, obviously, only a quarter of seats have counted so far, and we've lost uh, well-run Conservative councils and good Conservative councillors. So, clearly, overall, it's been a disappointing night. Well, yes, and you say disappointing night, but Medway Council in Gillingham... That has gone from the Conservatives, who've held it for 20 years, to Labour. That's something that even Tony Blair didn't manage. It's a huge loss for you today, isn't it? Uh, well, look, I mean, there's areas, of course, uh, we're disappointed. I was in Medway uh, during the course of the campaign. Um, but, you know, equally, there are areas that uh, Labour need to win to show that they're making progress. And I don't think they are making the comprehensive progress that they need to make. For but, example... But isn't Medway exactly a place that, well, like that, a, a Conservative heartland? It's a place so like that is, you need to hang on to if you're going been, to win a general election. The Conservatives have been gaining seats in places like Peterborough, uh, in places like Sandwell, in places like Bassetlaw. You know, those are all seats that Jeremy Corbyn won in 2017 that the Conservatives are gaining in uh, this year, uh, which I think means that for Sir Keir Starmer... Uh, it's not overall. It's not a uniformly good picture for Labour. In all my conversations up and down the country, uh, I've yet to meet a voter who comes to the door enthusiastic about uh, Sir Keir Starmer and his leadership of Labour, whereas every single conversation I've had is always improved by the mention of Rishi Sunak and the job that he is doing in difficult circumstances as Prime Minister. Why, then, are you talking about potentially losing 1,000 seats? It's something you've said in, in the run-up to this election repeatedly. A lot of people thought that was expectation management, but that does look like it's a real possibility, well, doesn't it? To be it? clear, the 1,000 seats is what the independent academic forecasts are saying. Uh, the professors, uh, Rallings, Thrasher, John Curtis are saying the 1,000. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Clearly, it's a disappointing time overall for the Conservatives, but I'm quite clear this is not the sort of euphoric Labour win that they got in 1995 in advance. You mentioned Tony Blair, uh, but the year before Tony Blair's win, Labour gained 1,661 seats. The Conservatives lost more than 1,900 seats. I don't think we're seeing anything like that uh, from yesterday's results. OK, and uh, you're losing around one in three seats that you were trying to defend so far. You're losing in all parts of the country as well. If that was to be replicated at a general election, Rishi Sunak would be out of number 10, wouldn't he? Well, we'll have to wait and see. You know, obviously, the seats that were up yesterday, there are more Conservative seats than there were for Labour and the Lib Dems combined. So clearly the Conservatives had more to lose yesterday but in some parts of the country which Labour need to show progress in. And Harlow, which was a Labour seat to 2010, uh, the Conservatives gained seats in Harlow. We gained seats in Bassett Law. We gained seats in Sandwell, which is West Bromwich. We gained seats in Peterborough. You know, this is not a uniformly good picture for Labour. Well, no, but let's look at the Conservatives. You're defending from a very poor baseline. The last time these seats were contested was 2019, and it was the worst election results in nearly a quarter of a century then. And, and if you look at the places so far that you're losing and Labour are winning, Stoke, Plymouth, Tamworth, pretty crucial general election, election battlegrounds, aren't they? They're the places well, that decide elections. Well, let's be clear. I mean, in, in Plymouth, there have been a number of local factors involved with the council. Uh, winning back Stoke, and, and we've got a brilliant uh, uh, Conservative council group... Uh, led by Abby Brown there, but winning back Stoke is a pretty low bar for Labour. Uh, under Jeremy Corbyn in 2017, Labour won two of the three parliamentary seats in Stoke. Uh, you know, this is not, if you like, a conservative heartland Stoke. It's an area we've done well in recently, but that sets a low bar for Labour. Looking at some of the areas that Labour... Uh, the Labour uh, need to win, like, for example, in Bassett Law, in Sandwell, in Peterborough. You know, the Conservatives have actually been gaining seats in those councils. Of course, it's overall a disappointing night for us. Um, but we have seen areas where Labour need to make gains, and they haven't. We've actually made gains. OK, you mentioned Stoke. There is also a Labour mayor now in Middlesbrough. Is this a sign that the, the red wall that Boris Johnson smashed through uh, is being rebuilt? Well, look, we, we, we've all said it was going to be a difficult night, and it uh, will, is a difficult night in, in some places. But what we're not seeing is Labour making that comprehensive break, break, uh, breakthrough. For example, just by Teesside, Hartlepool, 
uh, remains in no overall control council. That was, you know, Peter Mandelson's parliamentary seat uh, for many years. You know, that is something that, that Labour need to be winning, but thanks to our excellent local MP, Jill Mortimer, we're holding on in Hartlepool as a no overall control council. You know, that is somewhere where Labour need to be smashing it, frankly. Uh, so there are some signs here that Keir Starmer is not getting the cut through, the breakthrough that Labour needs. Does there seem to be a springing back of, of support for Labour in areas that voted Brexit and where Boris Johnson did well in 2019? It was always thought at the time they may be borrowed votes. Do you think that's turning out to be the case? Uh, well, look, uh, we'll have to wait and see. We're only one quarter of the way through the results. Uh, what I'm saying is, of course, and we're very disappointed to have made losses uh, last night. Good Conservative councillors have lost their seats. But I'm not seeing that breakthrough for Labour that they would need to be for Sir Keir Starmer to be able to say, hand on heart, uh, that he is ready to form a government. You know, I don't think that Labour are doing well enough. And as I say, we're actually seeing Conservative gains in places like uh, Peterborough, in Sandwell, in Bassett Law, and other kind of key places that, uh, in those, most of those places, also voted for Brexit. Well, well, you talk about key places. What about losing to the Liberal Democrats? You're losing seats in, in Windsor and Maidenhead, for example. Well, we're disappointed with the results in uh, Windsor and Maidenhead. Uh, Andy Johnson there has run a good Conservative council, he and his team. Uh, so he's one of many people who, uh, who have had disappointing nights as part of the disappointment overall for the party. Uh, but again, you know, these are not a comprehensive uh, situation. In 1995, before Tony Blair's landslide, you know, Labour were gaining 1,900 seats. Uh, sorry, 1,600 seats. The Conservatives lost 1,900 seats. I don't think we're seeing anything like that. How damaging has this last year been to your party? We're on the third Prime Minister just in the last year. We've seen mortgage rates shoot up as a result of, of Tory policies. We've seen the, the biggest set of public sector strikes in decades. And we've seen the tax burden at its highest level for 70 years. I mean, that's a pretty tough sell for voters, isn't well, it? Well, I think the, the country has had a difficult year. The Conservative Party has had a difficult year. A lot of that is driven, of course, by uh, Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the big spike in energy prices, the big spike in inflation. But that is exactly why Rishi Sunak has given the priority he's been given to halving inflation, cutting the debt, growing the economy, reducing hospital waiting lists and stopping the boats. That is, those are the government's priorities. Those, I think, are the people's priorities. Moving forward, I think we're, Rishi Sunak will be getting on with the job with the whole cabinet, making sure we continue to deliver for the whole country. So, but overall, a disappointing night for the Tories? Well, overall, of course, it's a disappointing night. And we've lost some good councillors and there'll be a number of people uh, feeling quite sore this morning. Uh, people I know well, having been in the Conservative Party for the last 37 years, I know many of our councillors personally who had reverses last night. But I do say quite clearly that this is not a comprehensive picture uh, for Labour under Keir Starmer. There's places there that Jeremy Corbyn won in 2017, like, for example, Peterborough, Sandwell, Bassett Law, the Labour, that the Conservatives have been gaining seats last night. So this is not a uniformly good picture for Labour. OK, well, Greg Hans, we appreciate you Thank coming you. in and checking in at this stage of the count. Thanks very much indeed.